Welcome to the solo cast of Firecode Tech. In these episodes, it's just going to be me, your host, Gus Gagliardi. There's going to be a range of topics, but I'm going to talk about specific technologies, installation standards, codes and how they work, as well as some other interesting topics that don't neatly fit inside of the context of a normal interview. Hello, all. Welcome to episode 17 of Firecode Tech. In this episode, we're talking about fire extinguishers. So this is probably one of the most frequently asked questions I get about fire protection is how to install and determine when fire extinguishers are needed. So fire extinguishers is a very common topic. I don't think it's a extremely hard to grasp um, the basics of fire extinguishers. But the problem is that they're so commonplace and uh, generally applied that I don't think much scrutiny is given to them very frequently. So in this episode, we look to talk about the codes and standards, the application of fire extinguishers, the different types of fire extinguishers, and just a basic general overview on fire extinguishers. So please don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social media. Also, if you could give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, that would be a huge help. If you're a fan of these episodes and you would like to listen to more, you can go to patreon.com slash firecodetech, and you can subscribe to get another two of these episodes a month. There are, by the time this episode airs, a total of 17 SoloCast episodes ready to listen to for a very low price. Let's dive into the show. So the first thing I want to talk about pertaining to fire extinguishers is the codes and standards around fire extinguishers. As always, I'll be speaking in reference to the codes and standards process in the United States. So we'll be looking at the International Building Code for the application of fire extinguishers. So the two major codes that we're going to look at when determining the application and specification of fire extinguishers are the International Building Code, and the International Fire Code. The chapter in the Building Code that talks about fire extinguishers is Section 906, Portable Fire Extinguishers. So the installation standard for fire extinguishers is NFPA 10. This standard is called the Standard for Portable Fire Extinguishers. So in true fire code tech fashion, let's talk about how we know when we need fire extinguishers. So there are two situations in which we could need fire extinguishers. There are general purpose fire extinguishers and specific hazard or specific application fire extinguishers. So the building code starts off in section 906 with a list of uh, different situations in which you would need general purpose fire extinguishers. Let's take a look at some of the different situations in which you would need general purpose fire extinguishers. Section 906.1, where required, portable fire extinguishers shall be installed in all of the following locations. Okay, here's the big requirement that basically encapsulates almost every occupancy located in the building code. This is the first in a six item list. In group A, B, E, F, H, I, M, R1, R2, R4, and S occupancies. So if you can't tell, that's pretty much all of them. Uh, And then it has an exception that says, in group R2 occupancies, portable fire extinguishers shall be required only in locations specified in items 2 through 6, where each dwelling unit is provided with a portable fire extinguisher having a minimum rating of 1A10BC. So we'll talk about those ratings a little bit later, but um, just understand for now that that is a capacity rating for fire extinguishers. So this first section in 906 basically is an umbrella statement for all of these occupancies that they do in fact need general purpose fire extinguishers. So this is the requirement that basically requires your standard type A, B, and C fire extinguishers throughout a building. So I guess we should get into the types of fire extinguishers before I get too much further because I don't think I can keep referencing these different types of fire extinguishers without laying the foundation. But before we move on, so the the synopsis of this topic is 
when do we need fire extinguishers? We need fire extinguishers when section 906.1 of the building code tells us we need them. And then there's a list of six different uh, instances in which you need a general purpose and specific hazard fire extinguishers in those um, instances. So I guess we should discuss what is a fire extinguisher before I tell you what the types are. So let's look in NFPA 10, section 3.4.3 in the 2018 edition, and this is the definition of portable fire extinguisher. A portable device carried or on wheels and operated by hand containing an extinguishing agent that can be expelled under pressure for the purpose of suppressing or extinguishing a fire. So for the layman or for just somebody who wanted to know the formal definition, that's what a fire extinguisher is. Now, there are a variety of different types of fire extinguisher, and basically these types are catering to the different um, fire that we're looking at. So when we are uh, designing fire extinguishers, we are putting the proper suppressing agent with the you know, combustible that we are trying to extinguish. So it's, think of it similar to um, determining the hazard. Um, you need to understand what you're trying to put out and the goal for protection of property and life um, in order to apply the, the right type of fire extinguisher. So let's talk about types of fire extinguisher and types of um, suppressing agent. So the way the fire extinguishers are classified is by the type of fire they're looking to extinguish. So if we take a look at 5.2 in NFPA 10 2018 edition, we can see information about the classification of fires. So we have class A, B, C, D, and K fires. So class A is your general ordinary combustible, such as wood cloth, paper, rubber, and many plastics. Class B fires are combustible liquids, and think of these as petrochemical pro products. So petroleum, greases, tars, oils, um, paints, solvents, lacquers. And so type C are fires that involve uh, energized electrical equipment. So anytime where you're going to be using an extinguisher on, uh, on or around electrical equipment that is energized, uh, you will need a type C um, fire extinguisher. And so D and K are the last two types of, of fires, and these are a little bit more special case. So generally, uh, for general purpose fire extinguishers, we have um, a combination of A, B, and C fire extinguishers, or A, B, C fire extinguishers, and then um, class D and K fires have specific fire extinguishers with a different variety of uh, suppressing agent. So class D fires are combustible metals such as magnesium, titanium, zirconium, sodium, lithium, and potassium. So if you don't know, they're with metal fires, you know, oftentimes um, water and other common suppressing agents that work on uh, more standard combustibles like wood and natural materials don't work on metal fires. So uh, this is why we have class D fire extinguishers to utilize some different suppressant, suppressing mechanisms in order to um, extinguish these fires. And then type K are um, fires in cooking appliances. For Think of these as deep fat fryers or uh, kitchens like commercial ranges and um, just fires with uh, involve, uh, it says class K fires are fires in cooking appliances that involve uh, combustible cooking media, and vegetable or animal oils and fats. So there are, we'll talk about the specific application of um, class D and, and K fires, but uh, this is a big overview of the types of fire extinguishers. Okay, so just as a quick recap, the types of fire extinguishers are uh, correspond to the types of different fires. So there are class A, B, C, D, and K fires. And so general purpose fire extinguishers are type A, B, and C. 
And there are specific application fire extinguishers for class D and K fires. So those are metal fires and um, fa deep fat fryers uh, or just any cooking appliance with that utilizes uh, a significant source of animal fat or oil. So let's go back to uh, IBC 906.1 where we were talking about the general purpose and specific hazard fire extinguishers. So we talked about the first uh, item on the list, which basically requires general purpose fire extinguishers for um, most occupancies, but uh, does not require them for R3 occupancies and some R2 occupancies. And then we look at the second provision of this section, and it talks about, says, within 30 feet of commercial cooking equipment. So this is that class K fire extinguisher we're talking about. So where you have commercial cooking equipment and there's going to be a significant source of oils and fats and, you know, kind of a uh, high heat environment, uh, you want to have, you are code required to have a, a fire extinguisher within 30 feet of that area. And so the third list on the item, I mean, the third item on the list is um, in areas where flammable or combustible liquids are stored, used, or dispensed. So uh, this could be those flammable combustible liquid cabinets. This could be, uh, you know, like uh, flammable combustible liquids are a pretty, that's a pretty wide umbrella. I mean, this could be anything from greases or lubricants to paints and thinners. So lacquers, I mean, uh, solvents, like uh, think about where you're storing hand sanitizer, you know, in the pandemic. So there's a huge variety of different flammable and combustible liquids that could be considered in this item on the list. And then the fourth item on the list is on each floor structure under construction except group R3 occupancies in accordance with 3315.1 of the International Fire Code. So this has to do with fire extinguishers for buildings under construction. So there's a whole NFPA for that. I'll look it up in a second, but can't remember it off the top of my head. And then so the fifth item on the list is where required by the International Fire Code sections in Table 906.1. So here in this table is a whole list of additional hazardous locations which would require a fire extinguisher to be located in the room where this hazard is present. So think of the first couple provisions as um, the first one is general purpose. The second one, the second through the, you know, uh, other than four, second through six are uh, specific application fire extinguisher hazard provisions. So um, let's give an example of a couple so industrial ovens, um, combustible fibers, solvent distillation units, uh, bulk plants and terminals for flammable and combustibles, LP gas, liquid petroleum gas, uh, aircraft towing vehicles, welding apparatus and aircrafts. So these are just um, hazardous operations in specific that require a fire extinguisher. So uh, number five is just linking to this table, which provides, um, I don't know, 30 or 40 different areas that require a fire extinguisher. And so number six, which is the last item on this list in the International Building Code, which talks about where required, where fire extinguishers are required. Um, a, a lot of people, or I'll, I will say that oftentimes fire extinguishers are just kind of uh, put everywhere. But um, fire extinguishers, although I'm an advocate of fire extinguishers, um, I'm not an advocate of putting fire and life safety systems where uh, there are uh, not requirements for them. I believe that there are requirements for a good reason, and we don't want to uh, not understand the application of these fire extinguishers this application of fire and life safety systems really just brings the whole trade down. So we want to understand when we are applying a system and why it's required, especially because I've talked about before, uh, when the conversation of VE comes up, which it frequently does, 
you want to be able to list out the criteria and uh, be extremely aware of why and when the system is required. That's it for this episode of Fire Code Tech. Thank you all so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. Be sure to share the episode with a friend if you enjoyed it. Don't forget that fire protection and life safety is serious business. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are by no means a professional consultation or a codes and standards interpretation. Be sure to contact a licensed professional if you are getting involved with fire protection and or life safety. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. (laughs) 